Hello, I'm Billy Ray Huzzy Potter, uh, associated with Southern Folk Pottery Collector Society. And we're here today to talk about the Lowey family of Alamance County, North Carolina, uh, early um, uh, 19th century, late 18th century, early 19th century potters who were German uh, origin and worked through Birch County, Pennsylvania, migrated down into uh, Alamance, Eastern Piedmont area called Alamance. Uh, we've got four um, red wire um, settlements from that time period. One in the western North Carolina near Lincoln, Lincoln County. The most famed, of course, is the Salem, Bethabra, Wachovia area of uh, potters there, German immigrants as well. Then there's a, a settlement, we're actually five, I guess, but there's one in uh, northern Randolph County, which is the Mount Shepherd site. Uh, one in northern Randolph County, lower Guilford County, southeast Guilford County, uh, the New Salem area, and then eastern Piedmont with the Loy family. All the other potters went through the, the Master Potter Apprentice Program, whereas the Loys handed it down or, or kept the system within the family, so they didn't indenture out children into Master Potters. But at any rate, beginning, we did have a fortunate that on uh, August 26th, uh, 2017 we did have a exhibition here that's what we're going to show you today uh, we started out with this unique piece of German pottery from the late 17th century and it has a goose it's a very large charger and has real gritty clay it's real light unusually light noticeably light weight thin walled so that's one thing about European pottery but anyway let's move right on into Alamance County here uh, if we go right up here uh, in Solomon Solomon was born in 1805. Uh, we'll discuss him in just a moment. These two pieces right up here, the bottle and this great cluster piece, we think are Solomon Loy. And Solomon was very diverse, and he was one of the fortunate makers that worked both in earthenware and stoneware. And the handles on this great cluster jar match a little piece we'll look at in just a few moments. All right, moving right over here to this section. This is George or G.H. Loy on the crock and the plate, just showing some other family members. This was uh, a nephew of Solomon. Go back over here to this section over here. We've got two jugs. If you'll notice the necks are identical. Uh, one is marked J.L. and we think this is Joseph, uh, more than likely Joseph, uh, Solomon's brother. And Joseph was born in 1812. And both of these have white or butter colored clay slip at the top. And that one signed J.L. there. Then we move over here and we're moving towards Solomon now. This one has a bow tie motif with rings at the bottom. Uh, squiggly lines here, if you will, pardon that. But the three finger ditches at the bottom of the handle is real indicative of Alamance County potters as well as German uh, potters in, in general. This, we believe, could have been William. Uh, William is Solomon's uh, older brother, the firstborn of Henry. We'll talk about Henry in just a moment. This we think is Solomon's piece. You notice the influence of the rings at the bottom. Turn around, two color clay slip on the handle, and the wavy lines, which is really indicative of German potters, which you'll find throughout the North Carolina red wire makers. Let's move down to this bottom, this lower shelf here. Uh, we've got a piece here signed Solomon Loy, and he didn't quite have room, so if you notice the Solom, Solom O.M. Loy, uh, which was real dear of him, with a real unusual triangular or diamond shape um, on the outer booge, and then the wavy line. Here's another original decorative motif by Solomon, a floral that was in center. Uh, but it's been worn away from wear of the period, but these are real unusual dollop things with the dots in the middle. Uh, then we'll move over on this section, and pardon opening the door, but uh, we'll move over a moment. All right, over here, continue with some more red wear, earthen wear. This is a motif of Solomon's here as well, um, with, a, with a zigzag or wavy line within horizontal lines. Uh, notice the wire in the middle. Another plate that with the dollops of two color clay. This is manganese and this is just clay slip. Moving down here. Uh, a, a, a unique piece here that's seldom seen is like a compass in the center. 
for lack of a better way to describe it, again with his regular motif of, of, of clay and manganese drippings uh, to form three or tri triunes, I guess you could call it, of, of the drips. Here, a real unique decoration. We don't know exactly what it was. That almost resembles a deer head, but it's a small bowl, which is really unique. And then the lower section, um, obviously Solomon here was having some fun where he dotted up the whole piece, small jug. Okay? And here is a piece that's real unique. These handles match the great cluster piece, you see. And this is a this is like a uh, a cream or maybe a clay slip or could even be tin oxide white with blue wipings. But the most unique piece about the unique feature about this piece is the double finger crimping outer wall and inner wall. And then he even did the lid. So there's no doubt this is the original lid, and that did come out of a home an estate, by the way. All right, um, go. Let's go right here for just a moment. Uh, these three pieces right here, which this one signed Salmaloy, another signature of Salmon's S. This one is J.T. Boggs uh, in an oval shape. Then the lower one is J.M. Loy oval shape. This is a really rare mark, as well as this is a rare mark. Well, Salmon's own mark is rare as well. But uh, a, a family member had gave a, um, an account, an oral account, that at one time Salmon Loy who taught J.T. Boggs, a local Almat's neighbor to Solomon, to the Lois, taught him how to make pottery. And then Solomon's son, John, John M., that at one time these three actually worked in a shop together, which is really unique. So if you notice the shapes, the rims, the slight bulge here, uh, so these do sort of validate uh, the, the family member's account, oral account, handed down generation to generation, that these three potters did actually work together at one time. Now let's move over here just a moment again. Back over here just a second. Okay. Pardon the door opening, but uh, open the door to get in, I guess. Here is a unique grouping of three jugs with with an oak leaf, oak leaf, and we got another oak leaf down below. But this is a regular, this is a motif. We don't understand the exact origin, but this is Solomon's work. Notice the strong handle with the three very bold finger swipes at the bottom and the neck. The neck here, this one signed with the oak leaf, Solomon, white slip with cobalt over Solomon. And then here is Loy, L-O-Y, with cobalt at the, at the bottoms. And again, a, a, a unique long swipe on that jug. And this is really a piece here. We've never seen this mark before. This is an impressed mark, backward S, Solomon, and then Loy. So you notice the necks are identical. So this is a this is a telltale sign. You can see the influence from from his possibly brother, younger brother, Joseph, uh, on this piece up here. Now let's go down here just a minute to the intermediate wear. The intermediate is a term that uh, was coined by Linda Carnes McNaughton who uh, excavated the Loy family sites and gave it that term. And this was a transition from earthen wear into stone wear. And here S. Loy, a jar with a real unique handle here, stands out at the top of a ring. And there again, the oak leaf, which goes with the others. Another elaborately decorated, where he didn't finish his name, it's just S-O-L, with a hyphenated cross and loy here, with totally oval handles, which is really unique. It's decorated all the way around with some flies from the keel. Another piece here, S. Loy, North Carolina, uh, with a impressed rose design. And we'll talk about that in just a moment, the significance of that again, just a piece. Signed twice, so he was very, very poignant with his uh, namesake. Another unusual piece, very different handles again. Double, double sign with cobalt uh, hi, uh, highlighting this single line piece, single line decoration. Let's move over here again. And we're just about getting one more piece up here at the top. Another Solomon Loy, a large crock with handles and again cobalt at the end. And unique about this one is he put cobalt on that handle but forgot to put it on this one. But he impressed, finger impressed the ends of the handles but didn't do it here. So he, he, was, he was busy. He was a busy man. But that's his intermediate glaze before we got into the salt glazing. And we'll talk about that a little later. All right, let's uh, look at one more piece right here. This is a really unique piece. 
Again, here's an earthenware bowl with just splotch decoration, um, just to give it some some of the uh, German uh, reflection of its heritage. Uh, a very very nicely made bowl with a very nice rim, and bowls are unique pieces. Here is a grave marker made by Solomon. You remember the rose motif we talked about? This was for an infant that died in 1834 and only lived. Uh, I don't know how old the child, oh, 18 months old. It died 18 months old. And here is the rose motif. Here's the rose motif. And again, on the back side, here's a group of roses, the, the impressed. So we know that Solomon made gray markers as well, or at least this one anyway. There may be another one known. Then we're going to close here with his masterpiece, which is a very large keg with bands like a cooper, like a barrel. Uh, cobalt around and obviously this is Solomon Loy, certified stoneware maker, uh, North Carolina, Chatham County, um, IM, LM, and a date that we can't quite make out, but 1855 is the year. Very, very handsome, striking piece. Uh, a starburst cluster here with cobalt on these large handles here. Double starburst on the back side, shows the, the ribs of the barrel-like uh, decoration he chose, another star cluster here, and that's just a masterpiece there, and it is a one-of-a-kind, which most of his pieces are one-of-a-kinds. And we'll close with one more thought. Uh, we did have a piece, if you go to the YouTube channel and uh, enter in red wire, you will come up with a picture that was made by Solomon's father, Henry Loy, that's elaborately decorated, very strikingly handsome piece. Unfortunately, we don't have it in our possession today, but we sold it in an auction. But if you look on there, it dates about 1780, 1790, but it is the predecessor to his shapes here. I thank you for your time. Goodbye.